Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Q and A. I'm joined. I'm honored to be joined by the film subject uh, Amy Tan, as well as its producer uh, Karen Pritzker. Um, we do need to, I think, say at the begin top of the film. Unfortunately, the director uh, James Redford could not join us because he passed away last fall. But um, uh, hopefully, we'll get enough uh, stories. And Karen worked close with it, with him for a number of years that she can speak to uh, how he uh, was approaching the film. So uh, first question I have for both of you is, how did this project come together? Um, how did, uh, Amy, how did you and James meet and decide to collaborate on uh, doing this film? It was a matchmaking process and I'll let Karen begin with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jamie and Amy were friends and sometime we have to discuss that too, but um, Jamie and Amy were, Bay Area fellow artists and, and friends. Um, and actually, Jamie and I were making another film. We, we, we did a film that was actually premiered at the Seattle Film Festival, which was a wonderful experience for us both um, about a school in Walla Walla, Washington. Um, and we'd been doing these, you know, sort of heavy films about trauma. And I wanted to make a film about play and the joy of play. And Amy, as you will learn from watching this documentary, has many sides to her. And I had seen her perform in one of her more playful roles. And I said, hey, aren't you guys friends? Like, let's get her for this play movie and talk about the, the importance of play, creativity. Uh, and she just had the most amazing, I'm watching the footage this woman is amazing. This woman has just says that so many things that I think need to be heard. Um, aren't you friends with her? We, we should do a movie about her. <laughs> and you should do it, Jamie, because you'll know how to do this. Um, you know, which is, which is, you know, so true. So, so uh, he knew her well enough to know that she would probably be a very reluctant subject. But Jamie, as Amy knows well, had, uh, in addition to being a really good director, um, was, was a charming, likable, uh, understanding, empathetic person. So uh, he was able to, to uh, enlist her <laughs> in this I idea. And I'm so very glad that he did. <laughs> so how long ago did this idea first come about? Um, was it fairly recently or has this been kind of years in the making trying to align calendars? What, no, 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 it went very fast. Once, okay. once, once Amy agreed that, part, <laughs> that when I got the idea, when we got the idea and I started, I had also pestered him. Like, <laughs> so, um, you know, I would say that conversation was, yeah, in like 2017 or 18, you know, the beauty of COVID is, is it's blurs day, you know, <laughs> you know, things, time, time collapses. But once Amy agreed, things went very swiftly. I know that part of it, the, the, for the play doc, when we were doing the filming of the Rock Bottom Remainders in Tucson, that was in Early March. On. March yeah. of 2018. So that right. was for the play documentary. And the reason I know is that my sister just died that day. And um, it was a, a, a terrible day. I was almost going to go home. And but no one was going to be home. And I thought, well, I might as well be with my friends, people I've known for 27 years. And um, so that performance, I don't know whether you know, Karen, that performance I, I, I did, I did. was completely different from the way I, know. And was, I, I was crazed. Uh, so I, I remember that clearly. And yeah. then later, it was later that Jamie came and said, hey. Yeah, it was much later think? because we, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was much we later. We were looking at all the stuff and, yeah. you know, it was like, and, and then Amy, you know, then we had to take the center out of our other movie and fill it in with something. <laughs> so, but, and I kept, you know, we, we kept this idea. Um, but when he actually approached Amy, I don't even, that part, I don't, I don't remember the second time to like, well, you're not in the play movie. Can we do a whole movie? <laughs> you know? uh, came yeah, later. yeah, yeah, came it later. was, yeah, it was later in the year. Um, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember during during part of it, Jamie and I were just 
on my veranda and we're looking at the trees, the oak trees, and he just starts talking about other things he's done and, you know, this, this subject of trauma that he, he, Karen and Jamie made a film about trauma and also about resilience. And he was asking me questions about my life and I would just naturally talk about some of these things. And then he'd say, gee, I wish we had known we could have had you in the film on trauma or something. And then he came back with this idea of doing a whole documentary on me, which, you know, I was listening to him doing this pitch and thinking, okay, when's he gonna stop so I can say no? <laughs> and, um, because at the time I was on a mission, a personal mission to uh, actually go into obscurity. That's what my obscurity plan. I wanted to withdraw more from public and just be a more private person. And, and doing a documentary on me did not meet with that plan whatsoever. So um, I very reluctant, but Jamie, as we all know, is he was incredibly charming in a very sincere way. Yes. Always, yes. always about in a trusting, sincere, wonderful way. And, and I knew I could trust him that if he did this, he would, he would do a wonderful job and he wouldn't do anything salacious or outrageous or anything like that. Um, he always maintained if he did something, if I didn't like it at any point, you know, both he and Karen agreed, they just drop it, you know? And I thought, wow, you know, they are so willing to, to go, how do they know I'm not some really difficult person? Um, <laughs> but, you know, I finally said yes. And in part because of that trust and because Jamie and I had a natural rapport talking about these subjects, his, he had gone through trauma and pain and had to have a lot of resilience. His trauma was different from mine, but life-threatening, you know, constant uncertainty and that was because of his illness. Um, and, um, you know, and I thought both of us have gone through this period of uncertainty in our lives, you know, up and down constantly. And I just said, at one point I said, you know, because Jamie kept coming back and say, well, what do you think? You know, I could show you this animation. And I said, you know, Jamie, I don't think you need any more uncertainty in your life. So I'm gonna say, let's do it, no hesitation just do what you want to do. So that's how we agreed to do it. <laughs> and I said, um, I trust you completely and just do it. You know, because once you are going to do something as an artist, you don't want to have any kind of, you know, binds on you where somebody is just saying you have to fit it within this confine or I have to look at it and approve every single scene and things like that. I just knew, you know, you trust an artist, you know what they've done, you know what their intentions are in their heart. And, and that made me very comfortable in saying, just go ahead and do it, you know, whatever. And I will tell me what you need and I'll try to provide it. We were, I, I will say this, in the beginning, Jamie said, well, we've already interviewed you for the play documentary and you're not going to be in there so basically we have a lot of interview we only maybe need one more interview you know just that maybe if you have some archival materials well of course we did many more interviews and also he'd come over for lunch just to casually I'm going to be in the neighborhood you know let's have lunch and so you know there were these off-camera conversations as well so how many interviews did it take to uh during the actual production of this film would you say and you talked about you know giving him your full trust but was there still anything even after saying that that you were maybe a little wary about sharing when when the time came to talk about it um you know i can't remember the exact number of interviews because um some of the, they occurred like natural conversations many of them so some of them were, were interviews, so to speak, conversations that took place off camera that also 
were part of his information to shape the documentary. And then the things that you see on camera are, you know, of course, the filmed interviews. Uh, and, and also, if you know about documentaries or any kind of film, you take about a thousand times more than you actually need to use in, uh, in, uh, in the film. So hard for me to say, you know, we had these lunches, we talked and we had conversations over email and things like that as well. Um, there wasn't really any hesitations that I had. You know, I didn't have any terrible secrets in my past that I was ashamed a for somebody to find out, um, you know, something, something that I would not want revealed. But if I had something that would have been embarrassing um, or very sensitive, Jamie would have asked me and say, is it okay if we put this in there? I said that I didn't want a puff piece. That was about the, the, the gist of what I said, um, that I, I didn't think it would serve well to either do something as simply a puff piece or to take an angle of mother daughter expert, which I don't consider myself to be. So I, I was just telling him, you know, what, what, um, basically things I wouldn't want, but he never would have done anyway. Um, and we were just in agreement about that. This was about me and a lot of things that would come in there about my life. It wasn't focused on just me being the daughter of immigrants or me being the, a Chinese American or just me being a writer. It was just everything coming together. And so that I felt at the end, he gave sense to my life and ultimately in showing how I became the person I am, how I became the writer I am. Yeah, one of the things that really struck me about the documentary was um, your, your dad was a amateur photographer. So there's a wealth of photographs from when he was alive when in your youth there's a lot of home movie and home video footage in it um karen can you talk a little bit about how uh you and jamie kind of shaped that footage into the film and and discovering that the, all that wealth of information for the first time well i remember him calling me and going you you won't believe what she had because we already amy has written some nonfiction things about her life so we already knew sort of what was available in prose you know but uh, you know she has so much and you know we got a digital you know and we we you know we we it, we he was very excited by it at the same time since we didn't want to do a puff piece talking head thing and jamie had always used animation almost all the, the all the films that we've done together we used animation and 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 that was his choice to to convey deeper meanings to even a picture of that time as amy writes so beautifully in her book um where the past begins photographs are one kind of record but what people are feeling um, how you see that later in time, the, you know, those are, are layers. And the animator was able to understand those perspectives and work with Jamie to create something that really enriched what Amy was, was saying that a photograph couldn't do. And some of the more difficult parts and even the more private parts, there's no photograph of that. Uh, uh, and that's the, 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 you know, the most interesting part. And Jamie's skill and vision of figuring out where they are and getting the right animator, this young woman who's from Chile that he found online by looking at her work was, you know, we looked at her uh, so much better even than we had hoped for. Um, and we, you know, it just really came together to do what, what Jamie's vision was. Yeah, I absolutely love the inclusion of those animated segments in there that were in the past. Yeah. I feel like that would have been some sort of unconvincing reenactment or reconstruction. Right. Um, I exactly. really feel like animation yeah. Yeah. Is, is a yeah. godsend for documentarians who want to do something with a subject's past, but don't want to do that resort to those awful kind of reenactments yeah. that yeah. Um, right. exactly. you kind of yeah. associate more with reality TV right now. 
than anything exactly. else. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, something that I kind of struck me as when I was watching the film uh, that both Amy's work, um, both her nonfiction and fiction and, and documentaries have in common is this idea that they adapt real life and turn it into narrative. You know, real life is messy. There's not a, a, an arc in it, but uh, fiction and uh, creative nonfiction and, and film gives it that arc. I was wondering if you could each talk about your approach to um, that process. Um, well, I can't, I can't really speak to the film because it's not my work. I'm the subject. So, you know, Karen might have more to say about how um, that arc I, I, appears. I think in this case, yeah, yeah, I, I would say more, there's, there's so many things one could have focused on and then create a little neat little arc. And I thought that mm -hmm. Jamie's skill was that he actually had this wide view of many aspects. And while, you know, you don't want to be seen solely as, you know, a, a, a child of immigrants, solely, uh, you know, the spokesperson for Asian or solely a mother daughter story. It is actually all in there. Mm -hmm. it, it is all there. Um, and, you know, somewhat chronological, but, 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 but Jamie was, you know, really the, the shaper, but I think the intent was as much to have the richness and which things would be, you know, sort of shine more um, and, and, and the fullness of mining all of what Amy is and her past is to come to where she is today and all the, not just her accomplishments, but the way that she's lived her life, um, you know, I think is what he wanted to show. And you take away um, a lot of wisdom from what Amy, the, her process, and he captured a lot of that. You know, I, I was, one of the things Jamie and I talked about was what makes a person resilient? You know, are you born with it? Is it neurological? Are there, you know, guideposts for how you deal with trauma? Well, when you're a child, you know, you don't have any of, you don't have access to any of that. And, um, but what I did do from a very, very early age is ask questions and, and also was very present in trying to not be sucked into the situation. Like there's one scene in which I'm just hanging on and I'm looking at something and I'm, and I'm just saying, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Um, noticing every single detail that allows me to not be taken by surprise and to prepare for what's going to happen, you know, with my mother's uh, attempts to kill herself, like just being right there. Um, and we talked about that as being possibly part of it, you know, that you, you keep questioning, you keep thinking you have the control. And, um, and though that was part of the making of me as a writer, you ask the questions, you're observing, you're, you have a perspective on, on what is occurring rather than simply being victimized by it. Um, and I was lucky to have that ability to ask questions all the time. Um, and perhaps it came from my mother because my mother was constantly asking <laughs> questions like, why did this happen? And, you know, um, so I, I had a similar thing where I asked and that plays into what happens when I'm writing and I, you know, not, uh, I'm addressing only the books that I write. What you see in the film are these traumatic moments. And I think that you see also that in telling them, in some cases, it's almost like I'm there which is why the animation works so well because it also anchors you in the present moment as if I'm talking in the present, this is happening, this is happening. And, um, and I, I also have this quality um, in, my, in terms of emotional memory that I think it's like PTSD because when it, um, I'm remembering it in certain situations um, I get the visceral memory 
and I'm there, I'm present, I'm feeling the same things I felt when I was that age and when something was happening. And so I speak from that. As a writer, I don't have to create the exact same scene. I can simply use that emotional memory to create a, a story that has similar conflicts or, you know, um, uh, something within the the me um, or the child, the character uh, that is going to move in a certain direction on the basis of how this character is reacting. Um, that's something actually that came about for me during the in doing the interviews with Jamie and also seeing the film later and saying, "Oh, this all really makes a lot of sense." In and how I look at this. And in fact, it enabled me in, in a way um, to, to actually teach a class. I've never taught, I, again, with my, my grand plan for obscurity, I never would have done certain things. Like it was a master class, and I'd been offered to do a master class, and I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. And later on, they came back, and it was after I saw the documentary or some parts, at, I mean, after having done a number of these interviews and I thought, you know, I do have something to say about emotional memory and how stories come out of those emotional memories. And, and so because of the documentary, I was able to, to actually do that and felt I knew what to say then uh, about my, how I write um, and why I write. Uh your mother is kind of the, the third character, or I mean the third leg of the tripod in this film, I would say, you know, between you and Jamie. Um, can you talk a little bit about the discussions about you and Jamie had about uh, presenting her on film and, and, and presenting her memory uh, in this documentary? Me or Karen? You wanted uh, both to... of you, either of you. Oh. Um... Jamie didn't really, you know, I didn't really need to know anything about what he was going to do with these characters. I, I just had a global request not to do talking heads, people saying nice things about me because I, I didn't think it'd be very helpful. And he never had that idea. I'd just seen so many documentaries on people that had that. So I didn't request for him to tell me how he was going to include my mother. I will say that my mother was a very honest person and everything you see in the film, my mother would have been fine watching that. Um, and that includes this, you know, a scene in which she almost kills me. And she, you know, she never shied away from what was the honest truth about something. She would have explained how she felt at the time. And um, so I, uh, he chose things that I thought were perfect. Um, one of them is her actual um, recounting of the this horrible first per this horrible first marriage, this husband who was abusive, and it she, she's talking about sex, and I'm the person with the you know recording this and listening, trying to just hold back and not say anything. And there it is on the film. I, I, I have to explain also, because if you watch this and you hear my reactions, it sounds like I'm completely bored and not paying attention. I'm just saying things like, uh-huh, hmm, hmm, mm-hmm, hmm. It was forcing myself not to speak because my mother goes into a place She'd go in a, to a place that was, again, like a PTSD memory, and she is right there. And I didn't want to stop her. I didn't want to break that. Um, and um, at times when she'd stop, I would just say something like, um, did you go to the market and buy you know, food or something, keeping her anchored in the past? Um, I didn't know that VHS tape was still out there. Jamie found it in a pile of VH tapes I was gonna throw away. And he found it, he found a lot of other things and he digitized it so that it was in the film, but also he gave it to me on an external hard 
drive. So I would have it for myself. And I am so grateful for that. Um, there were a lot of things to be grateful for with the documentary for me. Karen, um, as Jamie was assembling the film and you got your first kind of uh, look at what, what the finished product was going to be, was there anything that surprised you um, about either Amy's past or her character or just just in general what he was doing with the film? Um, I, I think it was what sort were of your first impressions. You know, in Oz, I said that when, when I was thinking about well, which thing are we, you know, how are you going to focus on all these aspects and not leave them out, you know, and not have a 10 hour movie, you know? Um, and so, you know, I think for me, it was surprising that so, so many things could be covered with, with such depth because it's, it's not skimming over the surface, you know, because in a, in a, in a life that's, you know, long enough, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to cover. Um, and so that was the surprising thing. And the other surprising thing was, which shouldn't have been surprising, but that what was captured was both the, you know, Amy's ability to observe and see, you know, how do you do that in a film, right? And, and that, that, that you can observe and then do that you know, wonderful artistic biochemical, you know, thing to transmute it, whether it's fiction, you know, or a beautiful bird drawing, that some of those are the same skills. And, you know, that that was captured and the richness, you know, obviously I read Amy's work, I, I'd seen her perform, <laughs> you know, but, but I never heard her best friend talk about her, you know, I'd never heard her, bro I mean, so all those other elements and perspectives and and Jamie's perspective woven together was surprising and wonderful and to see her bravery I'm always struck you know when I watch this by by her bravery you know both in also talking to her mother and letting her mother be her mother in in all those ways and asking those questions um and, and surprising isn't the right word but it just always really uh, both in, in, inspires and and amazes me because it's easy to move on, move away, and not examine and confront. And the lovingness with which you can confront is is also just a beautiful example to watch. Mm. You know, there well, were well, I think a it, number. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say there are so much that that Jamie filmed. And, you know, of course you you have much more footage than you're ever gonna use, but one of the things he spent a lot of time filming that ultimately there, you know, we didn't use very much of it. It was my relationship with birds. And there was one in which he was trying to capture me feeding hummingbirds out of my hand, which, you know, I do. But then there was a huge a number of people there with cameras and that's not great for hummingbirds coming you know but they they use that footage still you see me sort of standing at the fence and looking out at the bay and uh that's where I was trying to get the hummingbirds to come to me um you know so it, it that part of it even though those things didn't make it into the film that was part of my experience and I always take things um, in terms of the moment and is, am I getting something out of the moment? Uh, don't count on getting my uh, reward or the meaning of this um, later at the end. It might not come, I can't control that. But am I learning something? Am I there at the moment? And Jamie made it very easy to do that because of the choices he made in wanting what he wanted to delve into with me, the conversations. and and the interest that I had. I will say there was one, two moments I was like, oh no, I wish he hadn't put that in there. <laughs> it's when I'm playing the piano and I'm thinking, oh, I sound horrible. But then I looked at it and I said, my mother, look at her face. She is so proud of me. And then I was so glad so that if I had made the film, I would not have included that. And, and so I was, I was glad that somebody else was in control 
and because the piano played such a huge part in, in our relationship <laughs> and in my feelings of, of self-esteem um, because of terrible things that happened with the piano. Um, there were, there were also, if I had made it, I would have not chosen certain things where I didn't like my hair or I thought there were too many wrinkles. <laughs> so it's good to have somebody else make those decisions and, uh, you know, not for the superficial reasons that I would have edited something out. Well, I think it's a, a beautifully put together, concise portrait of your life, Amy. And, um, we're almost out of time here, but before uh, we go, let's, if I could just each get you to give your kind of last tribute to Jamie and his work on this film. Uh, I, I know our viewers would love to hear it. Uh, Karen, since you were his longtime professional partner, why don't you begin? Um, Jamie and I agreed on, I don't know, want, it sounds cool, wanting to make the world a better place, wanting to be able to communicate things and you know not, not just art for art's sake but but for meaning um, and he did that in so many ways even out, outside of his documentary film life I mean, uh, but honestly Jamie was a lot of fun to work with and um, I, you know, I've had a lot of working relationships with people where you can't tell the truth and um, you know, he was a person of integrity and, and, and honesty. And so, you know, we could have a lot of disagreements. On, on this, there was just very little, you go. He, he really knew what he wanted to do. But um, when you have mutual respect and, you know, we, you know shift p positions and, um, you know, w work, work through. But it was also just a lot of, you know, fun to work with Jamie and to be with Jamie. Um, and then, you know, to see that how much was absorbed, he was thinking about, and, you know, then able to, to create something else was, was, you know, really, really fun to watch. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we, we really enjoyed, I think, working together and it was, nice it, it, i always want to work with nice people and all and and you know that i knew that that I, amy was a, a yeah. friend of jamie's that we even though i hadn't met her i i just already knew well this isn't a diva this is a a, a person who's who's really um an artist and wants to work also in a fun way good way honest yeah. way yeah. i think for me it was talking to Jamie about the deep questions, about what we mean by certain things, the meaning of our lives, but also about the nature of hope. I think both of us are, are very much about hope, thinking about what it is, about the necessity of it. Um, you know, his, with his illness, his life-threatening illness, he had to ha have this hope and vitality and affirmation of life. And those were the qualities that um, the attributes both of us had and the questions that we had, it would all always go back to those things, um, always having that hope. And in fact, so much hope that I never ever considered that Jamie would die. I knew he had this, this disease, I knew it was dire but there was a quality about Jamie that would survive. He would keep going. Uh, and, and it was a surprise, a shock to me that he actually died. Um, and yet I, I look back and I say, but he is continuing, you know, he will. The kind of work that he did, he is going on. You know, that didn't die with him. It is going on. It'll continue. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time out of your schedules to uh, do this Q&A with me. And um, uh, like I said, love the film. And I think it's a great portrait of your life and work, Amy. And uh, it was an honor to be able to do this uh, with both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.